Hi folks, today uh, this is David Farmer. I, um, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about this V-Control uh, surround panner for the iPad. And it's been a favorite tool of mine for about a year now. And it's just a couple of little funny little things it does. But I, I want to show you a couple of things. And this, I'm not going to do all the setup, you know, with the server app and all that stuff. I'm going to, you know, NayRank has a great uh, video tutorial about that. And I apologize for the handheld uh, camera today but I have to do screenshots of the iPad and the panner, so I'm just going to do this handheld thing. So first of all, I'm going to show you, uh, that I think this is actually important, under Peripherals, Setup, Peripherals, uh, MIDI Controllers, to take a closer look at this, because basically what we have here is two uh, panners, and you see this one right here, Surround Pan 1, Surround Pan 2, V-Pan 1, V-Pan 2, and this up here is a Huey for the fader, part of V-Control, but we're really just going to talk about the panning today. Um, so what's really important to know here is that this is actually two panners. You've got one on the left, one on the right, and these uh, actually operate independently. It's two different devices, even though it's one screen, it's two devices. So what I'm going to do here is I have audio tracks, I have stereo and mono audio tracks that are bused to a 7-1 bus. Any sort of surround bus will bring up the uh, 3D, or I guess front back, uh, matrix of panning. But uh, today we have a 7-1 bus. So this first one I'm going to click on is a mono track. And you see the mono panner here. And you see where the panner is located there. Now I'm going to back up here, and you'll see that the where I, wherever I touch the thing, this is absolute, okay? So it's not relative. Wherever I raise up my finger and touch, the panner will pop there, as you see here. Now what's interesting here is the right side, the right panner also controls that. So either side controls that mono panner right now. Now where it gets funny is when you select a stereo track. So let me select this stereo track up here. Now you see both sides of the panner come up where this is panned left. See the ball there? The ball is right on the right hand side of the stereo track. Now when I when I manipulate the left panner down here, it operates on the left side. If I go to the right panner, it also is controlling the, the left side. This is just sort of a problem with the way Pro Tools works. It's not a problem with the Nayrink V-Control app. This is literally a Pro Tools limitation. So, in order to get this side to control this panner, I come right down here and I press the right button on the V-Control, in the V-Control window. Now this side is controlling the right panner, and the left side is controlling the left panner. Now the reason I like the surround panner as opposed to his new V-Control window is that this is multi-touch. Now you, normally I would use two hands, but you can see here I'm using one finger in one panner, one in the other. These are completely independent, and it's also multi-touch, so they go at the same time. If you use the V-Control window, also a part of this app for the iPad, you'll be controlling the Pro Tools panner but it's only, you can only control one side at a time for a stereo track, so I really don't care for that. I like this, and I also like the fact that they're absolute, so wherever I click and touch, they jump. Now, if your panner isn't behaving this way, you may have the link buttons highlighted, so make sure that they're turned off, otherwise, you know, you, you're trying to, to control one and, and it's um, controlling the other one. So turn these all off, right here. Okay, now here's where it gets the most wonky. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to click on the another stereo track. Now, what you'll have to notice here is the two different devices, the purple here and the yellow here. When we looked at this in the peripherals dialog, we saw that one panner was purple and one was yellow. Now what's happened here when I click on the second stereo track is the left side of the panner is controlling the window that I have visible, but the right side is not it's still on the original track. You see how it's still on the first track? Now if I, if I pan the left side, you'll see that the left side is actually controlling track 2 here. And if I go to the right side, it's back still on track 1. Now there's no way inside Pro Tools to get this to behave the way I want it to, so what Nayrink has done is added these little nudge arrows down here. And in order to go to the next track down, I press the right arrow here which in his mind was in, in, in the mix window, so it actually nudges it over one track. So now what should happen is, oh, I must not have hit the button. So if I nudge that down one, you'll see that now these colors 
purple's no longer here and yellow are not separated. So these are now operating on the correct, these are both on the same, basically the same pan window now. So that's where it gets kind of wonky. Um, so now you can actually nudge down each side to go to the next track. You know, that's basically the way you have to, to, to manage your right side. Now let's say you have a bunch of tracks and you don't want to really nudge them all the way down. The sort of workaround here is to click on a mono track again, any mono track, and that sums both of these together to be the same side. And now when you, the next time you click a stereo track, you're back to both sides controlling the left again, and then all you have to do is hit the right to get them back together, back to controlling the stereo. So that's a little bit wonky, but believe it or not, after you use it a little bit, it gets to, it becomes more second nature. And the biggest problem for me was just figuring out what the heck was going on the first time. But now that I know to either click on a mono track, back to a stereo, and then back to the right button again, it's really not that much of a pain. Now the, the thing you might not like is the fact that the Pro Tools window doesn't follow, but that's a Pro Tools limitation, not a NARINC uh, limitation. We've been complaining about that for a while, but that's just the way it is. So anyway, hope you like that. Use the panner. I've been using it. I love it.